So this is Steven Chin for Night Hacking at DevOps, and we're going to be doing interviews here all week with different Java luminaries and folks from the community. Our first guest is Richard Warburton. Welcome, Richard. Hi. Nice to see you. And, um, yeah, you're a familiar face. Didn't I just see you last week in Sweden? Yeah, we did do a fairly similar interview <laughs> <laughs> in Sweden at Oradev. Yeah. Cool. But, but this week it's DevOps. Yeah, somehow we both made it over here safely, <laughs> which is kind yes. of ironic. So um, what sort of stuff are you doing here at the, at the conference this week? So I'm giving a talk this afternoon on uh, some performance and kind of low-level hardware stuff and how that affects you as a Java programmer. Cool. And I'm giving a quickie about lunchtime tomorrow talking about Lambda Behave, which is an open source testing framework which I maintain. And I'm giving a talk tomorrow afternoon with uh, Raul Irma on how you can refactor your Java code to be more functional using some of the new Java 8 features. So you know you should let some other speakers have some slots occasionally. That's, that's pretty rude of you. I, I apologize. I apologize deeply. But, you know, I'm sure DevOps has... <laughs> you, look, you look really sorry. <laughs> this is as apologetic as I, could, I can get on that point. Well, I'm that's afraid. why they have a steering committee, right? It's yeah. not your fault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, um, oh, yeah, the last week we were going to chat about some open source projects you're working on. So... Um, what sort of cool hacking stuff have you been doing? Yeah, so over the summer, I, I was doing a, working on an interesting project with Martin Thompson and Todd Montgomery uh, called Aeron, which is a uh, new reliable messaging transport. So it uh, works for uh, unicast, multicast, and also kind of an inter-process communication. Cool. So it's kind of sitting in the similar space, kind of API-wise and usage-wise, as things like uh, Zero MQ and, and Nano Message. But it's got some really interesting performance optimizations and really interesting performance work. It's also, interestingly, I'd say one of the first few projects which is out there, which is written Java 8 from the ground up. API makes really heavy use of lambdas for callbacks when people are receiving messages. Nice. So um, did you conceive the idea before Java 8 came out? Um, yeah, the, the, the project kicked off uh, in terms of discussions yeah. and things before Java 8 went gold, but not that much before, like about the same time, I'd say. Okay, um, awesome. And, you know, you're, you're making good use of your summer vacation. Yes, my summer non-vacation. Non-vacation. <laughs> non-vacation. We also make some interesting use of some of the um, other aspects of Java 8, which aren't really talked about so much. So um, when our message comes from our, our API right down to, the, down to a low-level networking API, so we have mm -hmm. different messaging transports we can work over. Like, for example, we, we run on top of UDP and provide a reliable layer on top. But we can also, there's also work in progress to make it run on top of InfiniBand, which is a cool. proprietary yeah. high-performance networking uh, stack. Yeah, but I guess um, that's probably used a lot in um, financial stock trading. Used a lot in HFT, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and also po possibly some work which we'll do sometime down the line to make it work with kernel bypass networking stacks. Cool. So there's a lot of people in that area who have things like regular hardware, which they want to run on, or regular networking hardware, mm -hmm. but they don't want to necessarily have the overhead of those extra system calls for every time you want to send some networking data. So there's a bunch of people who do these kind of projects that have like a kernel bypass networking stacks, which is be quite a cool things to support for that kind of stuff. Nice. Um, but yeah. So one of the interesting things about it in terms of the implementation is from the API down to the networking stack, we're entirely weight free. So every operation is guaranteed to complete within a certain number of steps. Cool. And there's a bunch of the changes which happen in Java 8 under the hood around uh, lock-free and weight-free programming. So, for example, it used to be the case that when you wanted to uh, have like an atomic add operation on a numeric value, uh, in Java versions previous to 8, that was actually implemented under the hood by having like a CAS loop. So it would say, I'll try and add it, and I'll check whether it was the previous version and swap if it's the one I know I yeah. added onto. Um, and that kind of thing means you have potentially... Uh, bad latency conditions when you've got contention between multiple mm -hmm. processes trying to write to that same area of latency. Whereas in 8, it's just a complete atomic add operation on, eight, on x86, for example, under the hood. So you get this really, really nice performance so is there right a down to the hardware. direct processor instruction for that that they're using? Yes, yes, there's an atomic add operation. Yeah. Okay, very nice. So I guess that, that doesn't work on all platforms, but we're supported by the architecture that will take advantage of it. Exactly. But realistically, the architectures which people want to run this kind of thing yeah, on, it's, it's supported. So yeah. it, it's, it's good. Cool. Now, that's awesome. So looking Fantastic. forward to hear more about that project. What other sort of stuff are you 
are you up to these days? So your book we talked about earlier. Yep, yep. Um, um, I guess that's, that's the Lambda's book to buy. That is. <laughs> that's the Lambda's book I'm recommending to buy at any rate. Yeah, Java 8 Lambda's with O'Reilly Media, which I'm, I did a book signing for this morning, nice. and I'm going to do with, sponsored by the JCP, who are lovely on that front, and I'm going to do another one tomorrow afternoon with O'Reilly, the publisher as well. So that'll be cool. Cool. And, and some training? Yes. Well. Um, so I'll run a two-day training course with Raul Irma, on Java 8, so that's kind of going hands-on, in-depth, two-day in-person training course. And we're running in, at the moment, London, Paris, Holland. We, we delivered a course in Holland on Monday and Tuesday of this week, which was yeah. great fun. Um, and also Sweden as well. Cool. So that's cool. Um, and we also have a kind of trimmed-down online version of the course, uh, which you can get through Parlays, which has just uh, launched its training courses as well today. Nice, yeah, which is okay. Very so nice. you're, you're one of the featured training authors yes. on the new Parlays training site. Yeah. So how's your experience been using the, the new Parlays training? It's been very good. I mean, pr the behind the scenes, you, you probably don't see this as an end user, but behind the scenes, they've got this whole video editing platform yeah, that yeah. you can work through. And I'm not sure, you know, I've seen quite a few people have kind of video editing as like a rich desktop client, mm -hmm. but they've, they've done a really good job of demonstrating it's also the kind of thing you can do as a web app these days as well. It's pretty impressive tech. Yeah, and they got a lot of experience doing that with the rest of the Parlay stuff, which they yep. all converted to HTML5 as well. Yeah. Awesome. All right, cool. so great interviewing as usual. And, Thank um, you very much. You're going to slow down you. a little bit this, this winter, right? Take a break for the holidays? Yes, yes. No? After DevOps, I'm home. <laughs> I'm home until the end of the year. Awesome. All right, cool. thanks very much.